I call the 51st Convention of the Diocese of Southeast Florida to order as we celebrate our Convention Eucharist today. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Isaïe, chapitre 45, verset 1 à 7. C'est à te choisir voici lui pour faire travailler lui. Libali main pour toute nation soumettre devant lui. Li voyer pour être pouvoir voir yo. La pour ouvrir deux battants en portail la ville yo devant lui. Pas qu'un portail qu'a prêté fermé pour lui. Mais ça c'est à dire voici lui. C'est moi-même qu'a pour ouvrir chemin pour. M'a fait mon yo vin plate. Ma crase gros portail en privio, ma casse ba feuille de bout. Ma ba ou toute richesse qui serait côté qui fait noir, richesse qui cache dans des pots côté moun pa connaît. Mais ça, wa connaît c'est moi-même qui sais. C'est bon Dieu peuple Israël là qui te relé ou pour faire travail ça. Moi te relé ou pour te ca délivrer famille Jacob yo. C'est l'item yo, mon peuple Israël, moi te choisi ya. Moi ba ou grad à tout ou pas de konem l'an. C'est moi même qui se ya, pas de l'autre. C'est moi même qui se le bon Dieu. C'est moi qui ba ou toute force à tout ou pas de konem l'an. Moi fais ça pour tout moun sou la terre, depuis côté soleil levé, jou côté soleil couché. Le cas qu'on est, par un lot de monde, pas c'est moi-même, c'est moi-même qui sais à par un lot. Moi mettez lumière, moi mettez fer noir, moi bah il est posé, moi bah il est sauté. C'est moi-même c'est à qui fait tout ça. Parole bon Dieu qui gagne tout le pouvoir. Sing to the Lord on your soul. 
the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. Sing praise to God and bless his name. As for the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence, oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Sing praise to God and bless. Thessalonians. You can find this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly, remembering before God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord, Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you. Because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about it. What kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Sit a Seigneur qui nous unit, pour chanter ton amour, et ta parole en Jésus-Christ nous re- 
Santo Evangelio de nuestro Señor Jesucristo según San Mateo. Gloria a ti, Señor Jesús. Entonces salieron los fariseos y tramaron cómo tenderle a Jesús una trampa con sus mismas palabras. Enviaron a algunos de sus discípulos junto con los herodianos, los cuales le dijeron, Maestro, sabemos que eres un hombre íntegro y que enseñas el camino de Dios de acuerdo con la verdad. No te dejas influir por nadie porque no te fijas en las apariencias. Danos tu opinión. ¿Está permitido pagar impuestos al César o no? Conociendo sus malas intenciones, Jesús le replicó, Hipócritas, ¿por qué me tienden esta trampa? Muéstrenme la moneda del impuesto. Y se la enseñaron. ¿De quién son esta imagen y esta inscripción, les preguntó. Del César, le respondieron. Entonces, denle al César lo que es del César y a Dios lo que es de Dios. Y al oír esto se quedaron asombrados, así que lo dejaron y se fueron. El Evangelio del Señor. Gloria a ti, Señor Jesús. Hello to my friend and brother, Bishop Peter Eaton, and to all of my friends, brothers, sisters, siblings of the Episcopal Diocese of Southeast Florida. It is a joy and a privilege to be able to address you this day in this way. I do so uh, just a week or two before your actual convention, but I wish I could have been with you. The original plan was that I would join you for this 50th anniversary celebration to celebrate the ministry that has been in the past, the ministry that is now, and the ministry that is yet to come in the days ahead. But the reality of COVID-19, the reality of this public health pandemic that affects and impacts us all has meant that you are meeting virtually and I am with you virtually. But virtual or physical, we are one in the spirit. Congratulations on your 50th. May God bless you for the days ahead that you may follow in the footsteps of Jesus of Nazareth into the new future that God gives. Now in the name of our loving, liberating and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This anniversary comes at a time of real perplexity. COVID-19 and the pandemic and all that that means, hardship that it imposes, suffering, sickness, and even death. These are difficult times. The reality of our racial past, the past of our history of racism in our country has now been exposed anew, if you will. And our country is in the midst of a racial reckoning. And we are in the midst of an election season. Election seasons are always fraught with 
anxiety and competition and that kind of thing. But this year is different. We are a nation that is divided. There is real divisions. There are divisions that, that left unchecked could threaten democracy itself. But we need not fear. We need not fall victims to fate. We are people of faith. And we can move forward together. I'm a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I believe that Jesus has shown us the way to live. He has shown us the way to live as God dreams and intended. He has shown us the way to live by the power and the energies of love that find their source in God. He's shown us how to live in families, in communities, in states, in nations, and as a global community. I'm a follower of Jesus, let me make it plain. Because I believe that Jesus was right. He was right. That love is the way. Unselfish, sacrificial love that seeks the good and the welfare and the well-being of others, not just what I want and need for myself. Jesus was right. That way of love is the way of life itself for us as individuals and communities, for us as a nation. Jesus was right. Let me offer you a text. It's one you know. It's from the 10th chapter of Luke's gospel. As Jesus is about to head to Jerusalem, he's turning his face. The Bible says he sets his face on Jerusalem, knowing that he's about to give his life as an act of ultimate love. The Bible says, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, well, what is written in the law? What do you read there? The lawyer answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you've given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, well, who is my neighbor? Do this and you will live. Jesus was right. Love is the way. When that lawyer came up to Jesus and says, a great teacher, tell me, um, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He was asking him, what is the key to life? What, what is the secret of life? Both life now, if you will, on this side of Jordan and life in eternity on the other side of Jordan with God. What, what is the key to, to this life? that is abundant, that is, that is so durable and powerful that not even the titanic powers of death can take it away from me ultimately. What is the secret of life? And that's when Jesus says, well, what's in the law? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, love your neighbor as yourself. Um, and Jesus says, that's it. Do that and you will live. There's the secret of life. When I was a young kid growing up, very often we would go attend family funerals. And I come from, my dad was an Episcopal priest, I come from the side of the family that is composed of Episcopalians. Most of our family, are most are Baptists, and there are few Pentecostal holiness. And I remember when we would go to family funerals when I was young, and the old Black preachers would often preach the same sermon at funerals that had this illustration. You don't hear it much anymore, but back then you heard it all the time. The old preacher would stand up and say, you know, when you go to the cemetery and you look around the cemetery and you see the headstones, the gravestones, and you look at one of the headstones and you'll see, you know, John Doe um, uh, may rest in peace. And then underneath that, then you'll see um, the date and year of his birth, a little dash, 
and then the date and year of his death. The old preacher would say, you know, the truth is you didn't have anything to do with the date and the year of your birth. You didn't have anything to do with when you were born. So you had no control over that. And you probably didn't have any, if much, if any control over the date and the year of your death. But what you did have some control over was that little dash in between. And the question in life is what did you do with your dash? That's what the man was coming to Jesus and saying, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do with my dash? Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. Do that and you'll live. You'll find real life, eternal life. But you got to remember, this guy was a lawyer. So he came back at Jesus and said, okay, master, that's good. That's really very helpful. But, but, but who is my neighbor? You're saying I need to love my neighbor as myself. But can we define neighbor more narrowly? See, that's what he was getting at. He wanted to, uh, can we define neighbor more parochially so that neighbor is just those who are members of my family? Uh, neighbor is just those I happen to like. Neighbor, just those I agree with. Neighbor is just those who go to my church or neighbor, those who have my religion or neighbor, those who share my politics. Neighbor, those who uh, are my ethnic or racial group. Neighbor, those who come from my island. Neighbor, those who come from my country. Neighbor, those who speak my language. Neighbor, those who are like me, not those others. Let us Define neighbor as narrowly as possible. And Jesus says, oh, no, 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 brother. No, no, no. He says to him, he tells him a parable. He says, a man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho on the Jericho road. And he tells the parable of this guy who gets beaten up, mugged and beaten up. And of another guy who comes along and helps him. And the guy who comes along and helps him comes from a different ethnic group, comes from a different religious tradition, comes from a different tribe, a different clan, if you will, which is a way of saying he comes from a different world. They are not of the same nation. They don't share the same politics. They are not of the same race. They don't have the same religion. They are completely other to each other. Dolores Kern Goodman, quoting Ted, Teddy Roosevelt says, and I quote, the rock of democracy will founder when people think that people unlike themselves are the other. These two people were other to each other and yet one helped the other in spite of the fact that they were other, he helped him because he was not just other, he was brother. He was his relative, he was another human being created in the image and likeness of God as Genesis one says, which means if you share the same image and likeness, that means you're kinfolk as the old folk used to say. That means you are related. That means we are all children of the same God and father who has created us all. And if we are all children of the same God and father who has created us all, then that means we are sisters, brothers and siblings. And we've been put on this earth to take care of each other, to take care of God's creation. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor, all the others. Do this and you will live. I'm a follower of Jesus because I believe that Jesus was right. Dr. King once said, we will either learn to live together as brothers and sisters, or we will perish together as fools. The choice is ours, chaos or community. Love is the way. On March 2016, during the last presidential election, 
Donald Trump was speaking in Fayetteville, North Carolina at a rally not far from where I live here in Raleigh. And uh, at the rally, protesters came as they did during that campaign. Um, you may remember there were protesters at Hillary Clinton's rally, protesters at Donald Trump's rally. And the protesters were present um, at this particular rally in Fayetteville. And things got a little raucous and uh, law enforcement had to come in and lead the protesters out. As they were leading the protesters out, a man named John McGraw, who was white, 79 years old, jumped over the sheriffs and punched a black man named Raheem Jones, punched him in the face. McGraw was arrested for assault and eventually tried. At the time of his arrest, he said this, and it was quoted in the Raleigh News and Observer, he deserved it. The next time we see him, we might have to kill him. We don't know who he is. He might be with a terrorist organization. McGraw, as I said, was arrested and charged with assault. A few months later, he was in court. Raheem Jones, the man that he punched, was also present. McGraw pleaded no contest, apologized, and was sentenced to 12 months probation. After the court session, the two men actually met and faced each other. They shook hands. And McGraw said this, and I quote, if I met you in the street, the same thing would have occurred. I would have said, you better go on home. One of us will get hurt. That's what I would have said. But we are caught up in a political mess today, you and me. We got to heal our country. We are caught up in a political mess today, you and me. And we've got to heal our country. We are, and we must. We are caught up in deep divisions. And for the sake of this country, in the sake of this world, in the sake of children yet unborn, we've got to heal this country. And I believe that Jesus has shown us the way love. There's no spiritual of slaves based on the words of the prophet Jeremiah who cried out, is there no healing balm in Gilead? The old slave sang, there is a balm, a healing balm, something that can heal. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. And in the course of their spiritual, in the verse, they actually identified that healing bomb. First, they said, if you, cannot pre if, you, if you cannot preach like Peter, if you cannot pray like Paul, just tell the love of Jesus, how he died to save us all. There, that is the bomb in Gilead, a love that is not selfish, a love that is not just for me and my kind, a love that is given for others, an overflowing love that seeks the good and the welfare and the well being of others as well as the self. That is the bomb in Gilead. If you cannot preach like Peter and you cannot pray like Paul, you just tell the love of Jesus, live the love of Jesus, how he died to save us all. That is the bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. That is the bomb in Gilead that can heal the sin-sick soul of America. As I preach this, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Supreme Court Justice, was just buried a few days before making this tape. At the time of her death, there were many wonderful and kind words said about her. She was someone who embodied what it means to live a commitment of love. 
love for her husband and her family, to be sure. But, but love for others. She spent her life, and she didn't have to, working so that women could take their rightful place as equals in this American society. She fought for the rights of women, but she also fought for the rights of men. She fought for equal rights for everyone. She did it when it wasn't even popular to do so. She fought to make true the deep meaning of the words of the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. She worked to make those words true even now. She worked to make the words of Abe Lincoln in the Gettysburg Address four score and seven years ago, our forefathers brought upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men, all people, all children of God are created equal. That's love. But in one of the documentaries about her, the one titled Notorious RBG, she was interviewed and asked about a strange friendship, a friendship that she had with the late Justice Anthony Scalia. The two of them couldn't have been more different. They did not share the same political philosophy, didn't necessarily share the same worldview. They disagreed on a multitude of issues and they were best friends. And she was asked in the documentary about this friendship, where does this come from? And she said, well, we both loved opera. They, they, they both had a passion for opera um, and just the, they loved it and it made a difference in their lives. And so they and their spouses would go to the opera together. And then she said, and, and we both, we both love to travel. And so they, each of them with their spouses, the four of them used to travel on vacation together because they both had a shared love and it seemed to create common ground. And then she said, we both love the constitution of the United States. We the people in order to form a more perfect union. And that created common ground where they could disagree and find solutions even in their disagreement. They could find a way forward. Jesus was right. Love is the way. Unselfish, sacrificial love that seeks the good and the well-being of others as well as the self. Dr. King said it this way, and with this I would close. He said, Jesus was right. For history itself is replete with the bleach bones of civilizations that refuse to listen to him. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You shall love the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself. Do this and you will live. Jesus was right. Listen to him. Follow him. And in the 50 years that are ahead of you, change the world by the power of his love. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary. While I may not see you 50 years from now, I'll see you as soon as it's possible. God love you, God bless you. And may God hold us all in those almighty hands of love. Dear people of God, as we celebrate our 50th anniversary, 
we mark this moment conscious that our history as a nation and as a church is marred by oppression, by the enslavement of those who differ from us, and by the forces of racism that attack human dignity. The sin of racism is woven into our lives and our cultures in small and great ways, in things done and things left undone. As followers of Christ, we reject racism and, opp and the oppression of other human beings. In building Christ's beloved community, we must strive to love all people, respect all people, and work for the good of all people. We must stand alongside God's children of every race, language, and culture, and work together as agents of justice, peace, and reconciliation. In the assurance of our forgiveness, let us humbly confess our sins, our participation in racism, our privilege based on racism, and our perpetuation of racism. God the Father, you freed your people from slavery in Egypt, yet the legacy of slavery deforms our lives today. Have mercy on us. God the Son, you prayed that all would be united in your love and service, yet the divisions among us rend your body. Have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, you inspire us to live peaceably with all, yet the stain of genocide and internment mars our striving for justice. Have mercy on us. We have harmed one another and the earth through negligence, greed, and self-interest. Have mercy on us. We have failed to condemn discrimination that leads to unrest. Have mercy on us. We have decried violence while overlooking the inequity and frustration which are its cause. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. We have practiced injustice for economic gain and have oppressed others to make a false peace. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. We have sought comfort in advantage for ourselves at the cost of injustice for others. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. We have welcomed solace over conflict and ignored the cries of those harmed by our comfort. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. We have grasped for this world's goods and have been arrogant towards those who have little. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. We have not shared the good things we have been given and blamed the poor for their poverty. Have, have mercy on us. We have been fearful and distrustful of those who are different from us. Have mercy on us. We have divided ourselves from others and refused to listen to or believe their experience. Have mercy on us. We have been indifferent to the pain and suffering of our sisters and brothers. Have mercy on us. We have held in contempt those who need our help and not love them with our whole hearts. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. We have been self-satisfied in our privilege and denied our oppression of others. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. We have preferred order over justice and isolation over the struggle for peace. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. We have quietly held good intentions and kept silent the message of reconciliation. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. We have failed to act with courage for the sake of love. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Grant us courage and conviction, and strengthen us to love others who are unlike us. 
God the Holy and Undivided Trinity, make us compassionate in our actions and courageous in our works, that we may build with God Christ's beloved community in our own day. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, we stand in the shadow of the prophets, crying out for justice and peace. God calls us to be a people of reconciliation, serving a world in need. Courageous women and men have taken the risk of standing up and speaking out for the least and the lowest. This work involves risking ourselves for the sake of God's love, moving beyond ourselves in order to seek and serve Christ and one another. We are all called to the work and ministry of justice and reconciliation. Let us now recommit ourselves to this endeavor. My sisters and brothers in Christ, will you persevere in prayer and fellowship? Will you proclaim the good news of reconciliation in both word and deed? Will you strive to see Christ in all persons, both with whom you agree and disagree? Will you seek to mend what is broken by human sin and greed? Will you work toward dismantling the sin of abuse of power? May God, who has given us the will to do these things, give us the strength and the power to perform them. Amen. Amen. Let us keep a moment's silence as we remember all who have died of COVID-19, all who are sick, and the families of the ill and the dead. Let us also pray for our first responders, medical professionals, teachers and staffs of our schools and educational institutions, essential workers, and all those whose work puts them at risk, and their families. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
We celebrate this Eucharist today for all God's people everywhere. And especially today, as we conclude our 50th anniversary year, we celebrate this Eucharist for our whole diocese, for our congregations, schools, and special ministries, for all our clergy and people, and all those whom we seek to serve. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, in whom we are built up as living stones of a holy temple, that we might offer before you a sacrifice of praise and prayer, which is holy and pleasing in your sight. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Padre Santo y bondadoso, en tu amor infinito nos hiciste para ti, y cuando caímos en pecado y quedamos esclavos del mal y de la muerte, tú, en tu misericordia, enviaste a Jesucristo, tu Hijo único y eterno, para compartir nuestra naturaleza humana, para vivir y morir como uno de nosotros, y así reconciliarnos contigo, el Dios y Padre de todos. Extendió sus brazos sobre la cruz y se ofreció en obediencia a tu voluntad, un sacrificio perfecto por todo el mundo. En la noche en que fue entregado al sufrimiento y a la muerte, nuestro Señor Jesucristo tomó pan y dándote gracia, lo partió y lo dio a sus discípulos y dijo, Tomen y coman. Este es mi cuerpo, entregado por ustedes. Hagan esto como memorial mío. Después de la cena, tomó el cáliz y dándote gracia, se lo entregó y dijo, Beban todos de él. Esta es mi sangre del nuevo pacto, sangre derramada por ustedes y por muchos para el perdón de los pecados. Siempre que lo beban, háganlo como memoria al mío.
let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Cristo ha muerto, Cristo ha resucitado, Cristo volverá. Dans ce sacrifice de louange et d'action de grâce, nous célébrons, Père très saint, le mémorial de notre rédemption, en rappelant la mort de Jésus-Christ, sa résurrection et son ascension. Nous t'offrons ces dons qui viennent de toi. Sanctifie-les par ton Esprit Saint, qu'ils deviennent pour ton peuple le corps et le sang de ton Fils, nourriture et boisson sainte de la vie nouvelle en lui. Sanctifie-nous aussi pour que nous puissions recevoir avec foi ce saint sacrement et te servir dans l'unité, la fidélité et la paix. Et au dernier jour, conduis-nous avec la, le, la bienheureuse Vierge Marie, la Mère de Dieu. Les patrons sont de toutes nos congrégations, écoles et ministères particuliers. En tous les, et tous les saints, dans la joie de ton royaume éternel. Nous te demandons par ton Fils Jésus-Christ, par lui, avec lui et en lui, à toi Dieu le Père Tout-Puissant, dans l'unité de saint esprit, tout honneur et toute gloire, maintenant et dans les siècles des siècles. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Most dear Jesus, graciously fill me with your love, that I may always hunger after you, the bread of angels, the refreshment of holy souls. Grant that I may ever long to feed upon you, and that my heart may be filled with the desire for your goodness. Grant that I may always thirst for you, the fountain of life, the fountain of wisdom and knowledge, the fountain of eternal light, the joy and richness of the household of God. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love guard you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.
don't be discouraged by the troubles in your in his holy word he's never failed us yet oh, can't turn around now we've come this far by Life is very short, and we don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who traveled with us. So, so be swift to love. Make haste to be kind, and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Our convention is now suspended. We shall reconvene for our business session tomorrow Monday at 3.30 p.m.